Hey everyone, welcome back to The Road to Superman. This is the web series where we follow all the latest updates and rumours regarding the Superman reboot. This is episode 39 and yesterday was the final day of Superman production in Cleveland, Ohio, which means we will no longer be getting set photos from that location and possibly any other future location as well, as production ends in around half a month. But don't worry, we will still continue to go through all the updates we get throughout the final weeks of production, and I will also be keeping you up to date with everything that releases in post-production, such as posters or screen caps for the movie, and also trailers as they roll out as well. So make sure to subscribe to not miss out on any future episodes of The Road to Superman. But so, potentially for the final time, let's get into the set photos. And we start with Rachel Brosnahan returning to Cleveland to film some more scenes. She confirmed this on her Instagram story, and a little while later, we found out why she was coming back. The arcade in Cleveland is where we saw this stunt rehearsal take place, of Superman and Lois slowly spinning in the air. And by the looks of the huge crane they have outside the arcade, it appears they are now performing that very stunt. Someone near the set confirmed that they have removed the glass panels in the roof, and lowered the booms through the roof into the arcade, so this is certainly for the Superman and Lois scene. Like I said before, this is a magical moment between the two, and I wonder if Lois will fall in love with Superman or Clark. In Christopher Reeve's Superman movies, she fell in love with Superman first, and then when she realised Clark was Superman, she also loved him too, which I didn't really like too much until I realised that actually, Superman is the real Clark Kent. The Clark that Lois interacts with isn't really who Clark is. It's just the person he pretends to be so people don't put Superman and Clark Kent together. So her falling in love with the actual Clark Kent, who she sees as Superman, is actually quite sweet. And in Man of Steel, Superman and Clark were really the same person to Lois, as she found out who he was before he joined the Daily Planet and before Superman was an established hero. And I liked that variation in their relationship, but I'm hoping we go back to a Lois who doesn't know that Clark is the Man of Steel and she actually falls for Superman. I wouldn't even want her to know he is Superman until maybe the next movie or even later down the line. The mystery of that identity is a fun plot point to use. But now let's move on to the next set photos that are within a building that has been turned into Stag Enterprises. Here we can see the crew within the building, and over on the right we see Superman and Guy Gardner. But also, if we zoom over to the left of the image, we see a man holding what appears to be Hawk Girl's weapon. So she is also there too. And apparently Mr. Terrific was also there, so I do find this very interesting. They don't work for Stag Enterprises, they work for Lord Tech, and I don't know if they are seen as rivals, but I imagine it could be presented that way in the movie. And from this video, we can see that the extra outside are not happy with the heroes inside, and I wonder if that is because the Justice League International, formed by Maxwell Lord, are not very popular with the public. Or perhaps this is a variation of the Authority, where they perform justice quite brutally and people aren't very happy with that, and I think the reaction they get compared to how people react to Superman shows how people appreciate him far more than they do with that group. And this is probably a lesson those heroes learn from Superman within the movie. They start off seeing the public as a waste of time and people they don't really need to interact with and have a relationship with and that causes more friction between the two sides. And then Superman comes in and you see the positive reaction the public have with him and how they love him and by the end of the movie he probably inspires them to be better heroes. I think something like that is almost definitely happening. And I know some say that this movie has way too many characters within it and it should just be focused on Superman but Gunn has already said that Superman and Lois are the main characters. They are the focus. But what we also need to remember is that this is a cinematic universe where heroes and villains already exist. It's not like Man of Steel, where he is the first to reveal himself to the world. Superman is a year or so into his career as a hero in this film, and other heroes exist. If those other superheroes and villains weren't showing up, I would actually question that more than why they are actually there. Them appearing actually makes far more sense. You can still have a solo movie focused on the main character whilst also having other heroes appearing. 
Look at Captain America The Winter Soldier, one of the best MCU movies of all time. But not only did you have Captain America, you also had Falcon, Black Widow, Nick Fury and Maria Hill. I know some of them are slightly smaller heroes and I'm sure I've forgotten some others too, but the point being, you can still make a great solo movie with other heroes in it. Steve Rogers was still the main focus and his character development was phenomenal. Even look at Spider-Man No Way Home, you had two extra Spider-Man, about six villains or so, and still, Tom Holland's Spider-Man was the focus. It is clearly possible to do that, and I think Gunn can do it as well. He is used to juggling around multiple characters at once, and still getting great character development from them. And let's face it, if he made a Superman solo movie, where he was the first hero in this universe, a certain selective within a fanbase would complain that he was just copying Man of Steel. The guy literally cannot win with some people. But anyway, all we have seen from the Cleveland set are probably two or three scenes at the most, so people shouldn't overreact to those heroes being so prominent in the set photos. Gunn knows what he is doing. Now with the heroes going to stag Enterprises and this being the final day of filming in Cleveland, some fans have been questioning where is Metamorpho? We haven't seen him in the entire shoot and we know that he is probably a part of this group. So where is he? And I honestly don't know. He must just not appear in these scenes and maybe his role is far smaller than the others. Or perhaps we see him before he becomes Metamorpho. I did a little research and before getting his powers, he was Rex Mason, who actually works for Stag Enterprises and falls in love with Simon Stag's daughter, Sapphire. And I wonder if his only appearance in this movie is him before he gets his powers and is just a little appearance, maybe talking to Stag, who then ends up talking to our other heroes. Meaning Gunn would just be laying down the groundwork for later on. And I actually love that idea. Not every hero needs to appear after they have their powers. So Gunn having that in mind for future projects projects would add that extra level of planning and depth to this universe. Meaning he casts actors for those roles early on, but they don't necessarily play a prominent role right away. But it also means Gunn has them appearing in certain projects so that later on down the line, we can look back to their first cameos and now understand where they began in the DCU. And I absolutely loved it when the MCU would have smaller characters in one of their movies early on that maybe not many people noticed. And then a couple of years later, we see them actually play quite a big role in the story of one of their new movies. For me, that always made the cinematic universe feel more real and planned out, and seeing those characters reappear felt rewarding to me for my loyalty of watching every single movie. So I really like that the DCU may be doing the same. Now remember, this is just my theory on this. It could turn out that he does have his powers, but he just doesn't appear for these scenes. But if he is just working as a regular guy at Stag Enterprises, then I love that idea. We have two more quick updates to go through before the end of today's episode. And the first is that Lee Isaac Chung, the director of the new Twister movie that David Corrinsweet appears in, has talked about David being Superman. He said, So David was going out for that role when we were filming. We were all secretly rooting for him. When we found out that he was on a short list, a lot of us were saying, you know, he would actually be a great Superman. And that's fantastic to hear that they thought he would be a great Superman because it means people who have worked with him, interacted with him and directed him all believe that he has what it takes to be Superman. And finally on today's episode, here is a sneak peek look at some more DC merchandise being sold at San Diego Comic Con next week. Now I definitely want to get my hands on the Superman t-shirt and hat and hopefully after the event they make these available to order online. So make sure to let me know what piece of merchandise you you want to buy in the comments below. But that is all for today's episode of The Road to Superman. Thank you so much for watching. Please make sure to like, subscribe and turn on post notifications so you never miss an episode. I hope to see you here again soon. So until then, have a great day. Bye.